Hi, hello and uh, greetings everyone. Since there was a query on uh, the concept of critical closing volume, I decided to make a small video on it. And we are going to discuss some pulmonary mechanics and pulmonary function tests as well as some of the concepts associated with critical closing volume and a few more as well. So in order to know the critical closing volume, you should be knowing the basic concepts first, which is quite easy. First, uh, let me go with the normal spirometry and this is the zero point where you will ask the patient to breathe normally. And uh, this normal breathing, quiet inspiration and expiration is called uh, tidal volume. And this is a rough diagram, please don't uh, think that inspiration is more than expiration. It should be equal actually, but since I'm hand drawing it, uh, it's a bit of asymmetry, but still forgive me for the time. This is the normal tidal volume and uh, in order to measure the vital capacity, you're going to ask your patient to inhale to the maximum and uh, exhale to the maximum. So this is your inspiratory reserve volume, which is nothing but the maximum volume of air you can breathe in after a normal quiet inspiration. And this is your expiratory reserve volume, which is the maximum amount of air you can exhale after a normal quiet expiration. And uh, there's no doubt in that uh, adding all this inspiratory reserve volume plus this tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume is going to give your vital capacity. And this uh, no-brainer and uh, adding two volumes, you will get a capacity. So, and adding two or more volumes, you are going to get a capacity. In this way, you are going to get a vital capacity. And uh, now, this is the residual volume. Everyone knows this is the volume which you cannot exhale. And this is the volume which is always present in the lungs, no matter how much you exhale. Maybe later on we will discuss the mechanism of the residual volume as well but now trust me you know the definition of residual volume that the volume remains in the lung even after the maximum exhalation and uh, this is the functional residual capacity or FRC and this is the volume of the lungs which remain after a normal quiet inspiration which includes expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume there are certain importances in the functional residual capacity. So first, what are the importance in functional residual capacity is it maintains the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli even during expiration or exhalation. That is the most important point and which in other words means that it maintains gas exchange even during expiration that is the most important function of uh, functional residual capacity and this FRC is very important in maintaining gas exchange and preventing hypoxia from occurring during expiration preventing hypoxia during expiration that is the most important uh, point regarding the functional residual capacity now uh, what is the relationship between this and uh, the critical closing volume actually it's pretty simple and uh, so first you have to know the mechanics of normal expiration so for example take this is the alveoli at the end of inspiration it's full of air and uh, there are a lot of forces at the end of inspiration and at the beginning of expiration which is making a tendency to collapse the alveoli one is acting from inside the alveoli and two forces are acting from outside the alveoli. So first let me tell you the first force which is acting from within the alveoli is the elastic requirement. And uh, the other two forces which are going to act from outside are two forces. One is going to be the weight of the lung itself especially on the base of the lung why i am specifically telling the base of the lung is you know very well that it is the place where maximum ventilation as well as maximum perfusion occurs 
so that's why this is very this base of the lung has so much of importance but still the two forces are one is the weight of the lungs tending to act from outside and tending to collapse the alveoli and one more is the diaphragm which is being pulled up and also the intercostal muscles which is being contracted uh, which are going to collapse the alveoli so alveoli is going to collapse and decrease in size for say up to this but still it is prevented from collapsing completely by a lot of factors number one is your surfactant you all know and uh, number two is mainly the dynamic airflow compression or uh, dynamic airway compression which again we will discuss in the concept of residual volume dynamic airway compression these two factors prevent and there are certain other factors also which uh, i'm not going to discuss now but remember these two are very important to our concepts especially the surfactant which is going to prevent uh, the complete uh, collapse of the alveoli during expiration so now what really happens is for say okay first uh, let us uh, know the definition of critical closing volume the volume at which the airways at the base of the lungs start collapsing or start closing in fact is called the critical closing volume for say in a normal person the critical closing volume is almost equal to the residual volume actually why because is when you add uh, because this is forceful expiration right when you add more and more pressure to your alveoli more and more pressure from, more and more pressure from outside the alveoli you are uh, having a tendency to collapse the alveoli and uh, at a certain point almost near the residual volume at this point you are going to overcome the protective factors and you are going to collapse the alveoli completely that's why you cannot exhale any more air uh, beyond this point so this is very important so in a normal person the point at which the closing uh, critical closing volume lies is near the residual volume but it is in a normal person but what happens if it is a disease lung for say you have a very less number of surfactant or no surfactant at all or a defective surfactant whatever it is um the two most prime examples i am going to give you are the ards and the in adults and high end membrane disease in newborn so what happens here is because of no protective factors the alveoli tends to collapse at a much earlier stage because the protective factor is lost so whenever you try to exhale much more rapidly your alveoli is going to collapse or airways are going to collapse at this point itself for say and uh, what if the surfactant protection protection is more severely affected and there is no literally no surfactant at all and uh, now the scenario comes like that i'll change the color now the scenario comes like your airway starts collapsing during normal expiration itself so at this point itself so this is tremendously dangerous because it is the point at which your critical closing volume becomes more than the functional residual capacity and see this is a normal critical volume which is very low now it has been risen to this extent and your critical closing volume is more than the functional residual capacity and uh, your airways close even during expiration itself so that there can be any more uh, there cannot be any more gas exchange occurring during your expiratory process so at this point overwhelming hypoxia ensues because not only the surfactant is already a severely diseased lung so overwhelming hypoxia ensues and uh, the patient might die so it is at this point when the critical volume critical closing volume is more than the functional residual capacity normally the highly membrane disease are ards ensues 
so i told you um, some of the protective strategies for this some of the protective strategies for this one is to raise the peep the concept of uh, raising peep is nothing but this is the baseline all right and now you are going to shift the baseline to here by increasing the peep peep is nothing but positive end expiratory pressure so even at the end of expiration you are going to maintain this pressure simultaneously i mean you are going to raise this point to here and so your uh, new tidal volume curve is going to be like this so see now just by raising the p by just by raising the end expiratory pressure and maintaining respiration at a higher pressure you are uh, just overcoming the critical closing volume and now your new functional residual capacity will be this increasing the peep also increases the functional residual capacity note this point this also might be an mcq in the future increasing critical close uh, critical closing volume sorry 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 uh, increasing your uh, peep might increase your functional residual capacity as well please note this point so this is one of the strategies you take in ards and highland membrane disease just increasing the peep has shown a tremendous mortality benefit in ards so let's move on to the summary so in uh, summary your critical closing volume or closing volume is almost uh, near to the residual volume in a normal patient and uh, number 1 number 2 is in high membrane disease or severe ards your critical closing volume is going to be more than the functional residual capacity increasing your uh, peep might increase your functional residual capacity as well please note this point so this is one of the strategies you take in ards and highland membrane disease just increasing the peep has shown a tremendous mortality benefit in ards so let's move on to the summary so in uh, summary your critical closing volume or closing volume is almost uh, near to the residual volume in a normal patient and uh, number 1 number 2 is in high membrane disease or severe ards your critical closing volume is going to be more than the functional residual capacity and uh, number 3 is peep can increase the functional residual capacity by increasing the functional residual capacity you are uh, making your functional residual capacity more than the critical closing volume so that it's a very effective strategy that can be followed in ards and high